VP Harris, now presidential contender, speaks for the first time since receiving the official endorsement for president from President Joe Biden. Here it is. And it is good to be here with so many leaders, including, of course, members of Congress, members of our administration, and our extraordinary athletes. Our president, Joe Biden, wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast, and he looks forward to getting back on the road. And I wanted to say a few words about our president. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, he has already, yes, you may clap. <laughs> In one term, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who have served two terms in office. And I first came to know President Biden through his son, Beau. We worked together as attorneys general in our states. And back then, Beau would often tell me stories about his dad. He would talk about the kind of father and the kind of man that Joe Biden is. The qualities that Bo revered in his father are the same qualities that I have seen every day in our president. His honesty, his integrity, his commitment to his faith and his family, his big heart, and his love, deep love of our country. And I am firsthand witness that every day our President Joe Biden fights for the American people. And we are deeply, deeply grateful for his service to our nation. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. We got this and a whole lot more. So naturally, what you see happening now. VP Harris is taking over events that President Biden was scheduled to be at. This is part of campaigning and also securing the legacy of Biden, which by the way was something that President Obama echoed according to an insider that it was now about establishing and reaffirming the legacy of Biden. There are some twists and turns here, let's get into it. Democrats and the rest of the nation are once again turning to black women in particular to lead the charge in saving democracy. Following President Joe Biden's announcement that he would not run for the Democratic nomination, the network Win With Black Women quickly organized a Zoom call to show how prepared and determined black women were to take on this enormous challenge. The call, which was held yesterday on Sunday, was a powerful display of unity and determination with black women leaders from across the nation voicing their unwavering support for Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, according to reports, the Zoom call drew in an astounding 40,000. Um, I have the calculation at 44,000 plus uh, attendees and featured an impressive lineup. You had Maxine Waters, Jasmine Crockett, and many others. So the leaders passionately emphasized Black women's critical role in the upcoming election and share personal stories about VP Harris that underscored her qualifications and leadership qualities. Other notable attendees included DC Mayor Browser, Maryland Senate hopeful Angela Alsobrooks, and civil rights leader Bernice King, and Black Voters Matter co founder Latasha Brown. The call highlighted the urgency of fundraising and voter registration as critical strategies for supporting Harris's campaign. The participants raised over 1 million during the call. Now I'm going to get into some of the money here and also some of the energy. Now in order for a Democrat to win the presidency, they need two things, typically. They need unity, they have to, they have to build coalitions, and they need energy. Young people typically bring that to the table. Biden, however, did not bring the excitement, the energy was not there. In the first, in the first presidential run, he was the guy, the heir apparent because of what? Well, the electability argument, which I always say is a slippery slope. There's more. So the historic development obviously energizes Democrats now. And it does breathe new life into the campaign to defeat former President Donald Trump. 
and his new running mate, Ohio uh, Senator J.D. Vance, which is hilarious. Harris's newly launched campaign has already raised, based on calculation, 49.6 million in grassroots donation in less than one day. Okay, there's another calculation has it at over 90 million, which breaks Trump's record after he got the mug shot. Additionally, some major Democratic donors who previously stopped, paused, withdrew their commitment to donate, they're now back at the table. All right, um, Republicans are meanwhile scrambling. This is a difficult, a difficult strategy to maintain. They wanted Biden. Biden was understandable. They knew exactly how his presidential campaign was going to run. They had an opportunity to go against him before. Now you have a different campaign, different strategy, different contender. And according to one commentator who spoke to Trump, Trump was posed the question, are you ready to debate VP Harris? He said, no, he's not because he has to wait, according to him, until the official nomination actually takes place. Something I said prior, I hope that Biden would not debate Trump until he was officially the nominee of the Republican Party. However, that did not happen. So Republicans are obviously scrambling to retool a Trump campaign that was built to defeat Joe Biden into one capable of defeating a very different candidate. This clout could be part of the reason that West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, a former Democrat in name only, who turned independent, signaled on Sunday that he was open to challenging Harris for the Democratic nomination. That uh, appears to be a no go. Uh, so, a small political action committee that styles itself as a disaffected group of Nikki Haley, Republican, who now has endorsed Trump, those supporters. Who are committed to keeping Donald Trump out of the White House announced their endorsement of VP Kamala Harris for president on Sunday. The group is called Haley Voters for Harris, had been known as Haley Voters for Biden until roughly an hour after President Joe Biden announced that he had decided not to seek reelection, throwing his weight behind Harris in the process. So the quote was, we support Joe Biden's recommendation and will immediately change the name of our organization to Haley Voters for Harris. The group said, there is no time to lose. Craig Snyder, the group's director, told Newsweek in an email that Harris is a, quote, tough former prosecutor and the best candidate to, quote, defeat Donald Trump in November, end quote. Now, here's a twist. Former President Barack Obama has endorsed nobody. The Clintons have endorsed Harris. Pelosi endorsed Harris. Rank and file, they have endorsed VP Kamala Harris for president. And it would be a difficult reality to see a Harris not clinch the nomination. Hell, you got to get 300 delegate signatures to even be on the ballot to challenge VP Harris. All right, so the former president, Barack Obama, has not yet endorsed Ms. Harris. In fact, according to the New York Times, Glenn Thrush, he did not mention her once in an affectionate, um, if tautly written, tribute to President Biden that was posted on the medium shortly after he decided to bow out on Sunday. So Joe Biden has been one of America's most consequential presidents, he said, as well as a dear friend and partner to me, President Obama wrote. Obviously, everyone knows he chose Biden as his running mate in 2008 because he said at the time that he wanted an older, more experienced running mate with, quote, gray in his hair and limited future presidential ambitions, we will be navigating uncharted waters in the days ahead. President Obama wrote in the post, but I have extraordinary confidence in the leaders that the leaders of the party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges, emerges, okay? So a lot of people are reading into this, obviously. President Obama not currently right now endorsing VP Harris, I would not read too much into it. As I said before, it's going to be very difficult to upset a VP Harris nomination on the floor, especially 
when the reason you're doing this is to create unity and energy. You take away from that argument if you try to create disunity on the floor. Uh, to talk about this in more detail, Senator uh, Nina Turner, obviously you got Vance uh, on the VP ticket, which I know in, in, in your parameter of political thinking, that has to be just one of the most insane moves you've seen. But also the reality that you now have a woman of color, a woman period, and a woman of color at the top ticket. And black women are already organizing in ways within 24 hours that we've never seen before. What say you? Oh yeah, absolutely, Doc. I mean, my phone has been jumping between calls and text messages and keeping up with the, as you said, about 45,000 black women. They were able to raise a mil, just a, over a little over a million dollars last night. It was, I mean, that call was electric. This is going to call, it's going to rattle the, the Republican Party. They are not ready for this. They think they're ready for this, but they're not ready for this. It is bringing the type of energy that Democrats have been looking for. Doc, I just wish that something had been done uh, prior to having four months left. Yep. You know, they should have had primaries last year. I know we, we passed that. That's water on the bridge at this point. But I think it's important that people like me continue to, to point that out. Because in some ways, the neoliberal side of the Democratic Party betrayed its Democratic base and put us here in literally the 11th hour. And the whole sculpting of the narrative that yet again, black women are coming to the rescue is is really true. Coming to the rescue to try to save democracy, coming to the rescue to try to save the Democratic Party. I just hope that when all is said and done, that the Democratic Party comes to the rescue for black women, black men, black communities in the way that we can constantly and consistently show up for them. But hey, it's palpable. It's what is happening right now among the Democratic Party is palpable, but especially for black women. And J.D. Vance, Doc, don't even get me started on him. I mean, here you have Donald J. Trump railing against UAW President Sean Fain. And then you got J.D. Vance, Senator J.D. Vance showing up for the very first time to a UAW picket line. You probably saw that where yep. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur said, first time here, huh? <laughs> yeah, yes. it was his first time there. You know, you make some incredible points and to the apparatus known as the Democratic Party. Hopefully there's a lesson learned here. Because if you have a truly democratic process inside of the Democratic Party, every time you get a better and more engaged voter constituency. People want engagement and transparency. That's something that the Democratic Party as a company, as a corporation, decided to withhold. And now we are here. We got about 100 plus days for this election. All right, we'll bring you updates as they come.